Hey everybody, Tom here, and today Norman and Crystal are finally headed into the Inex encampment. They've known about this for quite a while, um, and we're just venturing in there after our devastating loss over here on the island. Holy cow, that was miserable. I'm hoping, since this is in the forest, it will be nice and pretty, and there will be birds to help us out, and all of those good things. Um, but before we do that, we need to do a road event. So. I did mention this in my cleanup video, but in case you don't watch the cleanup videos, um, a user, um, Saber or Sater, I still, <laughs> I forgot to look it up, don't hate me, um, pointed out that you do need to have your events shuffled at the beginning, and then after that you need to be drawing off the top of the deck, and then placing things that should go back into the deck in the bottom, only shuffling when told to do so, um, things like that. So I'm going to be drawing from the top of my road events deck, and let's see what's happening on the road. Heading down the main road, you see an old-looking wagon in front of you. It is covered in metal bars, and a number of ragged men in chains walk behind it. On either side of the wagon, you see a city. You see city guards on horseback, keeping a watchful eye on everything. You get closer, and one of the guards calls out to you, Keep your distance. We are transporting dangerous criminals. Moments later, one of the prisoners in back slips out of his manacles and begins to sprint full speed into the tall grass. Hmm, okay. Um, interesting. Next up, option A, help the guards catch the escaping man. B, interfere with the guards to help the man escape. Oh, man, that's kind of tough. And the reason why it's tough for me thinking about it is a couple road events ago, Norman and Crystal really started to, um, they started to gain favor with the guards. Um... But also, I just think their nature is that they would probably help the guy escape, maybe? But I think i got to stick with the storyline. We we are becoming friends with the guards. Um, mm, but also, uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm going for option A. Okay, so here we go. Option A. Um, if our re reputation is less than negative four, it's not. Um, otherwise, the man's speed after spending months in jail is no match for your own. With the help of guards on horseback, you quickly have him cornered and return to the wagon. We gain one reputation. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and gain a reputation, and then we destroy this card. These are for my destroyed cards right here. And here's our party sheet. Oh, it looks like things are going to be costing us still minus one, but now we are at positive four for our reputation. I mentioned this also in the cleanup video, which is that um, I'm slowly warming up to the idea of maybe not doing this on paper, but there is an app that will control all of this stuff. Um, for me, it's a little bit fiddly to use, and also integrating app screenshots into video is just it's like double the work of doing this thing that I'm doing here, but it might be worth it, so it's something I'm highly considering. Either way, we have gained our reputation, and now I'm ready to go into the encampment. So let's go to the app and see what um, is happening. All right, welcome to the Enix encampment. Uh, the requirement is that the merchant fleas needs to be incomplete, uh, which we, I think I talked about that a couple of videos ago, um, means that we just can't have that global achievement on the, on the map, which we don't. And our goal looks like we're going to kill a number of enemies equal to five times the number of characters. So we're on our way to killing ten enemies. I think we could do that. Let's zoom in on the introduction and have a good read. So this merchant wants to make an example of some caravan riders. Seems reasonable enough. For the right amount of money, almost anything can be made reasonable. You enter the Dagger Forest and begin to track down the encampment using Jekshura's crude map. It is well hidden, but following the signs outlined in the parchment, you find a dense cluster of huts in a small clearing of the forest. All that's left is to head in and make uh, that requested example. And it looks like in this scenario we have a special rule. Until door 1 is opened, one normal Enix guard spawns at A at the end of every odd round for two characters, or the beginning of every round for three or four characters. Okay, seems reasonable enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. And it looks like, oh man, if we were playing with more characters, this thing would be loaded with scary things. Uh, but as it is for two characters, it doesn't look too, too terrible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that set up, and we'll start playing.
All right, I've gone ahead and set up the map. We are going to start down here, and it looks like we're trying to get to door one so that we stop having things spawn here at point A. Um, I also will point out that because we're trying to track how many people get killed, um, I've got one, two, I've got I've got these blue cubes up here, and I'm just going to gather the blue cubes, and we will win as soon as we have ten blue cubes. I'm playing on just gathering them probably in these empty spaces down here. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at our characters, pick our battle goals, and all of that stuff. Okay, so for Norman, I have spent probably an hour picking both, <laughs> like between Norman and Crystal, I spent about an hour choosing which cards I'm not using, and also what I'm doing for my first move. It is taking a long time. Um, sorry, still glary. Okay, so I have decided to take out these four cards in case that is of interest to you. And so we'll go ahead and take those off screen. And um, really quickly, we're going to look at our battle goals. I did take a look at these already. I had the option between indignant, um, loot no money tokens or treasure overlay during the scenario, or scrambler, um, only take short rest during the scenario. I did not want to do that, so I am going to stick with this one down here, indignant. And we're just going to avoid picking up um, money this time. That's fine. And then, uh, with that in mind, that's why I took out the uh, loot. I keep talking about keeping the looting one in, but because of this indignant, I'm gonna. I took out my looting uh, player card. And what I've decided to do is, it looks like we're about to be surrounded by three Enix guards who are pretty terrible. They have retaliate, which is no fun. Um, I'm just not sure how fast they're going to go. So what I've done is I've picked these two cards here. And with these two cards, the reason why I've picked these is if by chance they go fast and they come and surround me, I'm going to attack this way. If they keep their distance a little bit, uh, if I go first, then I'm going to attack one of them at a range, and then I'm going to go ahead and arm up my uh, shield. So these are the two cards that I've decided to pick for right now. I'm not sure which one I would rather do. I think I'd rather they come closer to me, so I'm going to go slower. I'm going to go at a 32 and hope to go this way. And the only reason I think I prefer that is because I'm going to lose this card once I put it down, so I wouldn't get much use out of this nice attack 3 and push 2, but, you know, whatever. For Crystal, this was this was the tough one. I really, really struggled to narrow down what the heck she was keeping and giving away and all of that stuff. I'm not convinced I've made the wisest choices, but these are the four cards that I'm not going to be keeping around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take those out, and uh, for her two battle goals... I had Zealot and Pacifist. I think, gosh, this is so tough. Like, the issue is, uh, Norman is usually the one that tries to get exhausted. So while Norman's going to get exhausted, I don't know that I can let Crystal get so close to getting exhausted, which means I don't want to do Zealot. But this scenario is one where we need to kill 10 monsters altogether. So I don't know that I really want her to be a Pacifist. But coming down to these two, I think I could have Crystal kind of be dedicated to weakening people and try to let Norman get, oh, the final blows. So I'm going to keep this here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to track this by putting these three cubes on here now, and every time I kill a monster, I'm going to take one of these cubes off. Not the smartest, most ingenious thing ever, but it, it will hopefully keep track of that well enough. And with that in mind, let's just go ahead and flip this up. And once again, I just sat here cramming my brain, trying to decide what to do. And my plan is, I want to go open door one as fast as I humanly possibly can, because I don't want more guards on the board. Um, the guards have a health of eight, and while they don't have any like shields or anything like that, they just seem, well, no, they have a health of nine, but they retaliate. I don't like them. So I want to just get her to just run on over there, see if we can open that door as quickly as possible. And then, before I run over there, if by chance I go before the guards, I'm going to see if I can attack them with this crazy icy blast. Ugh, I, I might regret this, and I know I'm kind of using these two cards so early on, but where we're trying to just kill ten monsters off the bat, I just want to do it as fast as I possibly can. So let's put this at a 66, and kind of my current plan is to do that. All right, next up, let's go ahead and find the Monster Initiative turn order, and I can already foresee, I'm probably going to make mistakes. I'm going to be very careful if I can, but to me, all of these monsters look almost identical, and they all have this green background, and I get it, because I guess these are forest-dwelling whatevers, um, but I just know that that's going to be a little tricky to track. But either way, we've got the Archer, the Guard, and the Shaman, 
And on here on the board, here's three guards. We've got an archer and our shaman. So let's see who is going first. Okay, so the archer has an initiative of 29. The guards have initiative of 50. All right. And the shaman has initiative of 23. So I think the shaman's going first. After the shaman will be the archer. And then Norman has an initiative of 32. And then we're coming up to the guard and then Crystal. Okay, that's a lot of craziness. Uh, starting off with the shaman. He is going to move plus zero and heal three. Nobody's injured, so I guess this is the best time for that card to come up. But it's also good to be aware that he is going to be healing people. So if we're going to hit him, we got to try to hit him hard and kill him off quickly. Um, all right, so he is elite, so he's going to move three. Norman has a lower initiative, so he's going to target Norman as he moves. And let me point out here, thro Thrones, <laughs> the Game of Thrones. Thorns uh, kind of act like traps, but with half the damage and they don't go away. These are totem poles, which means they don't block line of sight, and we can get over them if we're jumping and stuff like that, but we can't end our turn there. And I say that because he's going to go one, two, three, probably, as he comes around towards Norman. So one, two, three. Wait, did I do that right? Yeah, one, two, three. And I know that these guys all take up a lot of uh, space, so having them on these hexes isn't great. Especially for this guy, I'm going to try to keep the cube in the middle of the hex where he is. All right, he's not healing anybody, so that was the end of his turn. Let's come to the archer. The archer is going to move plus zero, attack minus one, arrange plus one. He's going to try to immobilize. I really hope he doesn't go after Crystal. Well, I guess he won't because he's going to go after Norman because we're both equally far away from him. I know we're off the board. Whatever. And I'm just realizing that I'm talking really fast. I apologize. <laughs> Sometimes that happens when I get excited. I'll slow it down. Uh, but yeah, so our archer is going to move plus zero. He's a regular archer, so he has a movement of two. Right now he has a range of three uh, plus one, so he's a range of four. I know that they're just off the board, but let me count this out for you. So one two, three, four. So to get within range, he would have to land on there, but he can't land on there. So my best understanding is he's probably going to come here to make his way around that way. Sure, let's say that that's going to happen. And really quickly before I move on, in classic Tom fashion, I forgot to bring on the attack modifiers. There they are. So of course Norman is going before the guard, so I'm not going to be able to execute my attack that way. So we're going to go this way. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this over here in the active slot and we're going to put this token right here. And then we're just going to start having a shield of one for each of these attacks coming after us. And then I'm going to attack somebody at a range of three and I'm going to get an experience point. Yay, experience. Oh, that way. Okay, so that's why that's there. And then we're just going to do a normal attack of three at a range of three. Looking at the board, I think we'll just go one, two, let's just attack this guy right here, number five. I'm doing a ranged attack, so I can't use my uh, dagger or anything like that. So next, we're just doing an attack of three, Ugh, minus one. So we have attacked him with two. These guys, all oh, the elite guys have retaliate. Oh, duh, I keep reading, I'm sorry. As, this, as I was making all my plans, I kept thinking, we've got retaliate, but that's only the elite ones. No retaliate now, so that's better than I thought it was going to be. Here's number five, though. He is down to seven health. Um, yes, very helpful about that. I'm Yes. And that was the end of Norman's turn, so while we're here, let's just take a close look here. Each of our guards are going to move plus zero and attack plus zero. Their movement is two, their attack is three. So down here we've got our guards. We're going to go in numerical order, and we're starting with this guy, number two. He's going to move two spaces, and he's going to target Norman. So probably one, two, or one, two. We get to choose, but I'm going to try to get into their brand. He'd probably want to get as close to both of them as he possibly could. So he's going to come right here, and then he's going to have an attack of two. And by two, I mean three. And then it's going to be modified. Oh, gross. Up one. So he's attacking with four. Norman is going to block one of those damages. So... Uh, yeah, he's taking a hit of three. No good. We're down to nine. I did not like that at all. Then this guy is closer to Crystal, so he's going to go one, two, down here to Crystal. 
Boo. And he's attacking her with three modified. Gosh dang it. That sucks. So let's bring her down. Gosh. All the way down to three. That was... That was not ideal, is one way to put it. And then finally, number five, one, two, he'll attack Norman with three modified. Oh, well, ooh, okay. So I was going to be really PO'd because look at all of that. That's not good. But Norman has his iron helmet, which means that this axe is a plus zero. Woo! So Norman is taking another three damage. Gosh, those guards. This might be fast, but not in the way that I was hoping it would be. Except I'm just remembering that we had a one shield, so I'm going to put that there. That gives us one more life and an experience point, because I just left that spot. Okay, so for Crystal's turn, I think to maximize our Icy Blast, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to, I'm going to use it to attack this area right here. So it's the one central hexagon and surrounding hexagons. And that way I can hit all three of these guys. The problem is it's a ranged attack, which means I'm going to be at a disadvantage with these guys. Unless I use my goggles. So I'm going to use my goggles, and that way these guys will just be a normal attack, and I'll have advantage on that guy over there. So we are starting off with the Icy Blast first, and we're hoping to muddle these fools. That'll help Norman out, because he is getting whomped on right now. And really quickly, before I forget, uh, let's go ahead and give me two experience points. And we're going to bump up this element. And you'll just notice right now I've got these guards set up here, so I remember to put them out. Hopefully I won't have to put too many of them out. And let's just go... Uh, is that... <laughs> I'm a math teacher currently teaching clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's go clockwise. So we're going to go three, two, five. Let's start with this guy. And like I said, I'm using my goggles. So I think I've been putting things I'm using up there rather than tipping them sideways, just for ease of my brain. And, ooh, do you know what? While we're at it, ugh, this sounds crazy, but I hate these guys. And I don't think she's gonna be able to kill any of them, um, but let's use our potion while we're at it. I don't know if we're gonna get very many opportunities to get three people at the same time. At least I haven't seen that many opportunities recently. So I'm attacking two at a range of three. We're going to be muddling all of these guys. And let's add one to our attack. Ooh, I'm just kind of going all out here to start off. Okay, so an attack of two. Oh, here, I'll keep this out right now. Two plus one is going to be, um, and we're muddling. So two plus one is three, modified as a plus zero. All right, so um, three, four, number three. This guy's down to six. I can find it. There it is. Okay, that guy's down to six. And now we're attacking number two. Again, we're just having a normal attack uh, where normally we'd be at a disadvantage because it's ranged. Um, and that's also going to be a three modified. Oh, crap, as a miss. I hate that. Um, okay, and here I'm going to put it down lower so that I remember I've got to shuffle this deck. Okay, I did not... Ugh. Okay, and then finally, let's hope for a good one. I'm gonna get advantage this time, going for an attack of three. This is against guy number five, and oh, with an advantage. All right, so we had our miss and a times two. We'll take the times two, and we're gonna be reshuffling, so we just did six. So that's gonna bring this guy down to a one. That was good, she didn't kill him, which is what we wanted. I don't know why I bumped that off. There we go, like that. And that attack muddled each of these guys, even the guy that we didn't hit at all. Oh, flip it back. There we go. Like that. Okay, so these guys are all muddled, which is going to give them disadvantage on their next attack. I hope that will help Norman out a little bit. Finally, we get a move 8, and that's going to give us a jump, and we're going to move up the wind. So with an 8 move, and including a jump, Crystal's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. She's going to stop right here. It's not going to prevent the guy from spawning at the end of this round, but it's going to get her way up close to that door, so hopefully we can prevent further spawning from happening. Bump the wind up, and we're going to really quickly shuffle the decks, and then we're going to come back up here for the next round. So while I'm shuffling up this deck, did anybody watching this video participate in that crazy um, puzzle piece thing? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I don't know how to describe it. Um, 
Isaac, I don't think it was Isaac specifically, or Isaac had somebody putting out a whole bunch of digital, oh, I forgot this, <laughs> sorry. I was so interested in telling my story, I didn't shuffle everything. Uh, he had put out a bunch of digital puzzle pieces, and this was taking place, I think, the day before Easter. Or, well, it was taking place the weeks leading up to the day before Easter, but essentially he had some big Gloomhaven announcement party, something or other planned. And so these digital puzzle pieces were coming out, and you could kind of collect them by going to these various websites. I did not really have the time and <laughs> the energy. I don't know if the energy is the right way, but like technological skill. So I was mostly following the big forum on BGG throughout the day, which was just crazy. So much fun. Um, but essentially people were collecting all of these digital puzzle pieces. And at the end, there were two separate puzzles showing almost like a fairy character. I don't know anything. I don't know if that's a fairy character coming up or a new class. I think I read it was a new class. Um, but essentially, uh, there were two images that were revealed, and then the big announcement, which is that there's a small expansion for the post-Gloomhaven stuff um, that's going to be available. I'm probably going to pick it up, even though, let's be honest, at the rate that I'm going, I'm never ever going to finish <laughs> what's in the box. But it will still be a fun thing to have, I'm sure. And with that, that was the end of round one. And we're going to go ahead and grab this guy here. That's at three, that's at five. But again, hopefully these won't even show up, and this is going to go on the board. And we're covering the normal spawn spot, so I need to pick an adjacent one, because they're all closest to Crystal. But my thought is, let's probably put him right here, because thematically that seems right. I think these guys are coming in from this cave-like structure. Which means I need to add a couple of things up here. So we'll just add that loot to remember to put it there, and this guy has a health of 9. And also while shuffling and talking about the Gloomhaven thing, <laughs> I realized I should have put this over here in the Lost Pile and I got rid of that because I used that the one time and that's it. Okay, so for Norman, I kind of want to put my guard up even a little bit more because I'm so surrounded. So my thought is let's play this card as a shield for the rest of this round and then let's attack. I was really debating between piercing. Um, it, yeah, let's go look at the map. So I'm really struggling to decide which of these two to use. So I do have the wind on my side right now, so I could use this and do a plus one attack, so I could do a four attack on these two guys right here. But these two guys are still pretty strong. Two is still at full strength of nine, and three is at six. So I wouldn't be able to kill either one of them. But if I go for this one here, I could attack these two guys. Again, two is still at a full strength of nine, and uh, five is only at a strength of one, so I'm kind of wasting an attack, but at least it will kill him and he can't hurt me back, assuming I go before him. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go for that one, I think. Yeah, it just makes the most sense to me. And let's go as fast as we can go. Hopefully we can kill that guy before he kills me and that I won't regret it. And really quickly, I need to clean up a couple of small mistakes I made for Crystal. Um, I was researching if Crystal would be able to jump over this guy, open the door, and go into the other room. Um, but my, as I was doing that research, it looks like I probably can't put this guy on a door. I think that works like a wall. And so let's decide to have put him right there. So for Crystal, since Norman's not going to use the wind, let's choose ourselves to use the wind for uh, this. I want to set up our crackling air and if the wind, if we can use the wind now, which I totally forgot to lower those when I changed the round marker, I'll do that really fast, um, then we're going to be able to add two to all of our attacks for the next four attacks that we have, which is great. Um, and then I probably should be healing because she's way low. Yeah, let's plan on healing ourselves. So as quickly as we can, we're gonna do these two things here, and then we're gonna go open the door. Since the next guy isn't gonna spawn till round three, I've got that time, the end of round three. So before I forget, these should have been down here. So I'm really hoping that we can get there before the other guy, well, like we can take our turns first, because we were trying to do a lot of cleanup. Archers are 31, that's good, they're going after both of us. Guards are 55. That's good. They're going after both of us. Ooh, I don't like what that is. I don't think I've seen that yet. And the Shaman, an initiative of eight. Oh, wow, very fast. Um, okay, that could throw a kink in the works, but thankfully uh, 
Cristal is going first. Is kink in the works a phrase? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's a kink in the chain, a kink in the plans. It's a, it's something. It's something kinky. Okay, Crystal, let's start off by healing ourselves, put ourselves up to six. This is not looking great. Okay, so there was that. I'm going to put that down there in the discard. And then for this one, oh my gosh, I forgot to take off my dog's collar. Sorry. For this one, we are going to use the wound, or the wound, the wind. I'm going to mark that right here. So we are going to get plus two attacks on our next four attacks, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and put that marker right there. She's ready. Bring it on. Okay, so next up is the shaman. The shaman's moving plus zero, attacking minus one, and disarming. So the shaman is elite. So it has three movement, three attack, and a range of three. Crystal is closer than Norman by one space. So he's going to move right here to get within range. Oh, I hate... I hate bumping these things down here. Boop. Okay. So he's going to be one, two, three. So she's within range. And my coordination is on point today. All right. So we are attacking with two. Um, modified. Let me just grab this right here. Of course. Of course. I have only drawn good things for them. That sucks. So this is going to disarm her. I'll try to remember that. That means that she can't attack through her next turn. Oh, and why is that bumped up? Okay, so that was a six. We're taking three damage. I'm just going to take it. I know I could lose a card to prevent it, but ugh, I, I don't want to. So now it's Norman's turn. Let's just go ahead and we're going to put this shield right here. So we're going to have two blocks for this next turn, which is great. And then we're going to be attacking three and getting an experience point. All right, let's start off by attacking guard number five. Uh, so an attack of three modified with a minus one. That's okay, because we still kill him. So guard number five is dead. We're going to drop the loot and put the coin down here. Right there. So he's gone. I'll take him off the board. Put that there like that. Okay. And then I'll obviously don't need that anymore. Next up, let's attack number two. And since number two is at full health, I think I want to add my poison dagger to this attack. So let's add this. This is a melee attack, so I can do that. It's just going to add poison to him, and he's going to take more damage on subsequent hits. Um, and from there, what am I doing? Um, oh, yeah, I'm doing an attack of three. So we're going to modify that with a plus one. That's good. That's four. So he's down to five. Where was it? Five. There's five right there. And he's poisoned, which means that next time he heals, he just won't heal. He'll remove the token instead. Or next time I attack, I'll add a damage to the attack. The archer is up next. A movement plus zero, an attack plus zero. So movement is two, an attack is two. And the range is four, I should have said that. But he is within range of crystal, so he's just going to attack her uh, with two. Modified. Minus two. Oh, good news for once. I liked that a lot. And that's going to bring us to the guard's turn. So we're going to go in numerical order, two, three, then four. It looks like they're moving minus one, so they're only going to have a one movement. I think that's going to be good. Attack plus zero and strengthen themselves. So guy number two, he's obviously not moving. He's, at attack, he's attacking at a disadvantage here. So his normal attack is uh, three. Put him at a disadvantage, so we're going to draw two, pick the worst one. And yes, either way, with Norman, uh, that's going to be a zero. We'll take it. And then I need to remember that i got to shuffle this deck. So I'll... Somebody, rem I think, is sideways it. Sure, we're going to sideways it. And the half good, half bad news is that this guy can only move one towards Norman. So one, two, three, one, two... Whichever way we go, he'll probably come down... Ooh, what would he do? Let's have him come up around this way. He can't attack, which means that we're losing both of these muddles at the end of their turns. So, <laughs> yeah, cool. And finally, this guy is attacking Crystal. So attack of three. We're going to modify that with a plus zero. Okay, so three for Crystal. She's going to have to avoid that damage. Um, yeah, but also... I need to make sure that I strengthen this guy. That's going to give them advantage on their next turn. 
Same goes for both of these guys down here. Lily. I'm going to have to lose a card to prevent that attack. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to lose this card because I probably will end up losing it anyway. I don't know if that's good sound logic, but I don't want to lose this. I can't lose that. Uh, so it's kind of down to these two. I can't really attack next turn anyway. So maybe I lose this one and use this to move. Oh, I don't know. No, I want to hold on to... I want to hold on to that, I guess. Sure. All right, so let's go ahead and lose that one. And with that, it is time to shuffle some decks, which will just be this one here. So let's go ahead and get this one shuffled up. Gosh, this has been, like, this is almost as bad as my very first gameplay video of how I'm drawing things. Like, I feel like my characters are drawing bad attack modifiers, and the bad guys are drawing good attack modifiers. Holy me. Okay, there's that. And you know what? Really quickly, things are bad enough for Crystal. I gotta go ahead. I gotta make her invisible. This is killing me. This is like... She can't attack next turn. We gotta get the door open. She's getting surrounded by people. I'm feeling stressed out. Hey, we're gonna bring this down. That brings us to round three. If I don't open that door by the end of this round, another guard's gonna come out. And I am not enjoying these guards. So for Norman's turn, I should have moved this to the discard pile at the end of the turn, because that goes there at the end of the round. Um, <clears throat> let's see, I'm kind of thinking let's just move into position and try to spear, let's try to spear these guys, if we can. Oh, I hope that's enough. Yeah, that's kind of my plan. Yeah, is it? Yes. My other option was I just want to kill him quickly, but... It feels a little early to just be losing cards intentionally. So, as quickly as we can, we're going to spear, and then we can move. Or vice versa. Alright, so for Gristal's turn, this is tough. Um, I can't attack. I have this card up here doing nothing. I'm running low on cards. I can't lose this one. <laughs> like, I'm planning on playing these two cards. This one just for its movement, but also for its quick initiative. My original plan was to play these two cards, but I would be going too slowly. But I guess since I'm invisible, going slowly isn't terribly a bad thing. Um, maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Mm, I guess either way, I just kind of want to save this attack card, and this one's not an attack card at all. Okay, so I'm planning on doing this. We're going to go as quickly as we can. We're going to heal three, and I'm using this to move. Try to get into that room and see hopefully nothing even worse is happening in that room. Okay, so the archer is 44. So before, after Norman, before Crystal, the guard is, the guards are 50, same thing. And the shaman is 8. Okay, so the Shaman is super fast, apparently, and doing terrible things like immobilizing, and oh, I'm so glad I got Crystal invisible, because, again, we just have to get that door open. If she wasn't invisible, she was going to be immobilized and couldn't open the stupid door. But as it is now, she's invisible, which means that he's going to target Norman. So I think Norman might be too far away, so the range is three, so one, two, three... The Shaman can move to this turn. Oh, good. Okay, Norman is right outside of view, uh, or outside of the range of the Shaman. Okay, that's good news. And Norman's going next, and I think we're just going to continue with our plan. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use one of my movements to move into place. It doesn't really matter how I'm using that, I suppose. And then we're going to go ahead and pierce uh, the two fellas. So let's put ourselves right here. I really hope we can kill this guy. He's at um, five health, but we've got this poison on here, which is gonna add one to my attack. And I really need some good news here. So we're doing an attack of three, but against the poison guy is an attack of four. I don't have any wind to add to that. Oh, but I do need to add an experience before I forget. Okay, and then modified, I need something good. Okay, I got something good. Good. Uh, okay, so that was three, uh, four for the poison, and five. That took out the guy in front. So this guy is gone. Thank goodness. 
And while we're at it, I'm just going to bring his cube down here and his loot goes right there, which Norman is not interested in. And he's out of the picture. We're also stabbing here at guy number three. He has a health of six. So, plus zero. Okay, so just three. Bring that down. He's at a three. And this guard's going next, but Crystal is invisible, and he's going to move towards Norman. So his movement is two. He's just going to go one, two. That's good. It'll at least keep Crystal a little bit out of the way. And why I did the guard's turn before the archer's turn, I have no idea. I'm sorry. Apparently very dumb. Okay, so the archer is going to go now. Uh, he's going to move minus one and attack plus one. And with Crystal invisible, he's going to move towards Norman. Uh, let's see. Norm, sorry, the archer's range is three. So one, two, three. He'd have to get about here, but he can't jump, and his move is minus one. So he's only moving one. So he's not getting very far. He's just kind of following behind the shaman that way. All right, so Crystal, while invisible, is going to heal three. I got to just cross my fingers that nothing super scary is in this room. Um, but she's just getting beat up like none other. And then she's going to move and jump um, into that room. So moving one, we got to go into the app. And once we open that door, it says, you push your way into the back cave only to be faced with a half dozen crying, screaming Enix children. You have little opportunity to contemplate the implications of this development. However, as you find yourself also staring down the bows of several Enix archers, your only option is to continue fighting. So let's go ahead and open that door, and it looks like, okay, oh crap, look at all those traps. But we do have jump right now, which is good, but so many archers, but I'm invisible. <gasps> Okay, this is good news. All right, so I need to build this room. I'm going to put out some traps and one elite archer, some loot, and a treasure chest. Okay, so Crystal opens the door. I can get rid of this. I think I can get rid of this too because uh, we have now opened the door, and if I remember right, that means that these guards no longer spawn. So we've opened the door. We still have three movement to go, and... Uh, we're invisible. So I want to go one, two, three. I want to put myself right next to this guy if possible. I know I'm resting next time, but he's going to have to move backwards before he can attack me. And then I can just sneak right over there and open up the treasure chest and hope it doesn't explode on me like it did in a different scenario. And that's going to bring us to the end of round three, which should have spawned this guy. But since we got the door open, no more of these guards are going to be spawning. So that's good. There's only seven potential deaths on our hands right now. Um, between like the two deaths that we have and then there's five more monsters on the board. Uh, but there are these four rooms that I haven't even looked at yet. Because I just now have opened the door and I can refocus my attention. And before I begin this round, just a couple of maintenance issues I noticed uh, as I was headed over to Norman's play area. I forgot to uh, put these traps on there. It didn't matter for Crystal because she jumped over the traps anyway, but I probably should have those on the board. I also had forgotten to clean up all of these status tokens, not only on these bad guys, but also on uh, Crystal. So go ahead and take care of all of those. Those should be removed. And we'll begin the next round while we're here with Crystal. I'm having a hard, like, I don't know if I should have short rested or not, but I, with, as always with Crystal, I can't risk losing this card. I just can't. That's like game ending if I do lose that card. So I'm going to just risk it and take the long rest. Thankfully, I have six health and I'm guessing only the archer is coming after me this turn. Norman, on the other hand, I've had a harder time deciding what to do with him, but what I'm thinking is... It might be too early to be using this this here because I'm going to lose it, but I feel like I have a pretty good opportunity right now to use it if I also use the boots. So I'm going to plan on moving four and jumping and attacking two as I move through people, and then after that I'm going to do another attack where I do my attack of whatever. And for this one, I'm going to add two to my boot movement and I think that's going to be a pretty good effective way to do some good stuff. So I'm planning on this, this, I'll go as quickly as I can which isn't super fast, 72, uh, but maybe that will pull people in closer to me and I can trample them even better. 
and I probably want to heal myself while I'm at it. I'm guessing these guys are coming after me, so I'm just going to put this up here as a reminder. So we're going pretty slowly. I imagine all of these guys are going to go first. Archers, 68. Yep, they're going to go before Norman. Uh, the guards, 35. Yep, they're going to go earlier too. What a mess I've got up here. And our shaman that I hate, 62. Wow, that's the slowest one yet, but it's still going to go before us. Now I'm struggling to decide exactly what to do. I know I'm going a little out of order because this is guard four, but here's the camera. Um, guard four can't see Crystal, but can see Norman. Crystal is six spaces away. Norman is seven. So he's not going to get within line of sight of either one of them. And then he does have a ranged attack, which is unique for this guard. Uh, so it's just like, it's tough to know exactly what I'm supposed to do. I've kind of been looking around in the book and stuff like that. So I'm just going to have to make a judgment call. He's getting a move minus one anyway, so he's only going to move one space. So the question is, does he go up towards Crystal or down towards Norman? My best guess is Crystal is closest. He remembers seeing her go in there, but just doesn't know where she went. And so I'm thinking he's going to go one towards Crystal. I could be wrong, but that's my best guess. Now this other guard is just going to move... Uh, well, he's actually not going to move down. He's going to stay right there because he has a range 2 attack. So he's going to stay right there, and he's going to be attacking uh, 3 at Norman modified plus zero okay three is still three and i think norman's just gonna take it take it like a man so he's going down to four next up is the shaman so the shaman is going to move plus zero so he's getting what is it three movement and he's going to have an attack of three within a range of three which means let's see one two three i think the shaman is going to come right here sure why not right there and he's going to attack Norman uh, with an attack of three. Let me just grab a modifier while we're here. So an attack of three modified. Oh, geez, Louise. Uh, hmm, that really sucks. Um, okay, crap. Norman can't take five. He's only at four. That sucks. I was hoping we'd have one more turn before we ended up needing to... Um, what was I going to say? I was hoping we had one more turn before we needed to rest. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter what I discard, probably. I'm just going to have to rest anyway. It's just what I'm, what I'm losing. Let me lose... Gosh, I don't want to lose this, where our goal is to just kill 10 people. This would be a great one to kind of walk up and almost kill somebody all the way. But I don't want to lose my heal, necessarily. Hmm... But I think I'm going to. I could lose two of these cards, but I really don't want to do that. Uh, all right. That sucks. I'm going to have to go with that and hope Crystal comes back to heal me up when needed. Now, the archers are going to go. They're going to have a plus one attack and a plus one range. That's so good. Um, so he's going to move uh, within range. His range is three, so four to get close to Norman. And his attack is going to be a three. So let's go move him first. Uh, hope he can not get in range, maybe. That would be even better. Well, he can't move. Oh, yeah, he can't move. So he's just going to hang out right there. I like that. That's good stuff. Okay, cool. Which means that this guy isn't moving. He's doing an attack plus one and a range plus one, but he isn't moving. So he's going to be at a disadvantage. That's awesome. Let's hope for something really good. Uh, so his attack against Crystal is three. Modified. Uh, right, yeah, three. Modified with disadvantage. Minus one. Okay, two. Crystal can take two. So she'll go down to four. That, that, that was pretty good. That went well for us. So for Norman's turn, let's go ahead and heal ourselves. So I'm going to take that out, and we heal ourselves three. And now we're going to have a movement of six attacking two for everybody we move through plus two experience oh sorry i bumped the camera uh yeah so we're gonna put that there and then after that we're gonna be doing an attack of six so i see two good options on the board let's go talk them out option one is to kind of go like one two three four five six end here attack both of these guys with two and then attack this guy with six to take out the shaman our other option is to go one, two, three, four, five, six, 
attack these guys with two, and then hit the archer with six. Um, I'm more nervous about the shaman knowing that he has healing abilities, and he's at an 11. So if I could get him for two plus six, that's eight, and then any modifiers, that would be really helpful too. And then we'll just let the archer be for right now, I think. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go one, two, three, well, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's go right here. No, here for six. Okay, so first of all, I need to hit both of these with an attack of two. Let's start off with the guard. He has a health of three. We're hitting him with two modified. Yeah! All right, so we got him. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Take him off the board. That goes there. And then going after the shaman, our attack of two modified is a plus zero. Okay, so he's taking two damage, which is going to bring him from 11 down to a nine, like that. And from there, uh, we are going to do our attack of six and get a victory point. So, or what? An experience point, sorry. And then, before I forget, let's lose that. This one's just getting regular discarded. So we are attacking him with six because we moved six. And a plus one. All right, so seven. Oh, I thought I was going to kill him, but that's okay. And I know that that would have been tough to kill him. I mean, he's down to two, which is great. Um, the reason why I was hoping I'd kill him, I, I have three times twos in my deck, if I remember correctly. I think I picked up two blessings. Between scenarios, it was three weeks ago, so that's why I don't remember exactly. Plus my normal times two. I just want a times two. And really quickly, before I move over to, over to Crystal's turn, I just realized I should have used the shield on, I think it was the guard's hit. I blocked by losing the card, the shaman's hit, so I really should be at a health of eight. Because I should have blocked that. This isn't optional. You need to do that when they come up. I just forgot. Shocking, I know. I'm, I'm so on top of it today. And for Crystal, she is just resting, so we're going to take these back, but we need to pick one of them to lose. Um, let's lose... Um, probably I'm going to need to heal. Well, yeah, so I'm not losing this, obviously. Which one of these do I want to lose? Um, it doesn't matter which one I lose, I guess, because I'm going to get them both back anyway. But it would be cool to use this one before I lose it. So let's keep this here. Let's lose that one. And I need to remember to get my goggles back and then to heal two. Almost back to full health. I thought that I would have had more experience. Maybe I really am only at two. Oh well. And with that, I think this is the only deck that I need to get shuffled up. Uh, let's do that really fast. And I think that's the end of the round. I don't see any condition markers that I need to uh, remove or anything like that. So I think we're good. And really quickly, before we change rounds, I think I need to have Norman do a short rest. He's got people closing in on him and nothing to fight with. Oh, I'm nervous. Just this one card. Yeah, I don't think I can afford to do... Yeah, I can't afford to do a long rest right this second, which I wish I totally could, but I can't. And I would really like to just kill that shaman before he has a chance to take a turn. So, with that shuffled, we're going to lose this one. Oh, I wish I didn't lose that one, but it's, I think, not terrible. Yeah, let's just accept that. All right, so that was uh, Norman short rest. Now we can go change the round marker. That'll bring us to round five. So for Crystal, I really need to start attacking to use this thing up, but it's just tough to know what to do. Do I move into place before I start, like, okay. So if I do this, for example, let's say I do this, and I use this for my move to get onto the treasure chest and then attack the archer. Then these are gonna get discarded, and then I need to pick one. I'm gonna have to do another long rest. So I'm gonna pick one to lose and then get this one back, and then the next turn I would do these two. But that's kind of risky. If I need to block any damage, but I think I'm going to be back far enough that I've just talked myself into it. So let me hold on to this. That way I've got that heal coming around. It's not a super fast move, 
but um, yeah, yeah, let's do that, sure. So for Norman's turn, what I'm thinking is, let's do an attack of three. I mean, this is the best attack of three I could really see. That one's ranged. Uh, the Shaman's not a regular enemy. So that one's not going to help me. I could do that one, but I'd lose it. Yeah. So let's do this attack of three with our Pierce. And then, oh, Nelly. I'm going to do that as quickly as I can. And then let's uh, plan on moving and pushing. I can push, my plan is to push an archer into the thorns. Assuming I get a chance to go before he does. Fingers crossed. All right, what a mess we've got going on up here. I just realized how messy this whole thing looks. Sorry. All right, archer 56. Okay, good. We're going to be able to go before him. That's helpful. And then, uh, ooh, 15 for the guards. Okay, but they're just shielding and retaliating. Oh, and there's only the one left. Okay, that's not bad. He's not doing anything really. And the shaman, please go slow. Please go slow. 74. Yeah, okay, okay. We've got this. This is good. I like this. All right, so the guard is going to go first, but all he's doing is shielding and retaliating. Nobody's attacking him. He's fine. Chill out. Norman is kicking us off. He's 35. How did that end up being? Where am I putting this? What am I doing? Okay. This is all Skiwampus. All right, he's going to start off by doing an attack of three against the Shaman. We're going to just do a Pierce, and that's going to get me an experience point. I need to remember that. And three modified plus zero is enough to kill him. Yay! So I'm going to just go ahead and pull him off the board. See ya! And let me just grab these right there. Oh, and this needs to go there. We're nearly halfway through killing uh, 10 guys. We, we can do this, we can do hard things. And from here, Norman's gonna go one, two, three, and push the archer uh, into the, the thorns, and the thorns do half a traps damage for the scenario. So the traps in the scenario are four, so that guy just took two damage. So he's down to six. I wish I could have done more, but what can you do? He's just gonna he's just gonna target me, and that's fine. All right, before going on to Crystal, let's just clean up our mess a little bit. Did I just call her Crystal? Hopefully she didn't hear that, or she'd be ticked. All right, so what's she gonna do? I think she's gonna go ahead and move over onto the treasure chest, and then she's going to attack the um, elite archer that's there with an attack of three. So let's move first so we're coming up here and we're standing on the treasure chest so that's good um cool yep let me get that out of the way time to go to the app okay so here in the app we can just click on treasure 65 here in the corner and it looks like we've got a horned helm design item 107 so that's cool i'll just remember to uh, get that into our deck in the cleanup video and in the meantime, we're going to come over here and let's attack that guy. All right, so I don't know when I'm going to be attacking before I rest again. I probably am not. So might as well use our goggles for this attack. So we're going to draw two and get advantage. Oh, ooh, okay. Well, a plus zero, I can take that. Uh, and we avoided the miss. That just has come up several times. I got to shuffle differently. So that's going to put him at eight. Slowly but surely, we can get there. And now it's the archer's turn anyway. So uh, while we're here, I know it's not in numer- Well, I guess I am doing it right. You're always supposed to have the elite ones go first. So we're going to have him go first. He is attacking her, minus one. And his attack is three, minus one. This is two, modified. as a plus one, back up to three. All right, so then three damage is going to put us down to three. No big deal, I guess. I'm nervous because I have to rest next time. And the shaman is not going to get a turn, so I'm just going to remove that stuff from the board just in case we get another shaman in later because we have all those rooms to explore. And um, before I change the round markers and stuff, I'm going to just move the archer stuff that's over here. I'm going to put it over there just to balance things out. And you know what? I actually think that it's probably a good idea for Crystal before I change around marker to do a short rest. And so I basically have a 50-50 shot of losing this card, which is the card I need to lose. 
So I don't, I'm going to do this behind my back. I know it's off camera behind my back. I'm not keeping track. But the reason why I'm doing this is if I grab the wrong card, then um, I can just lose a health, which I know sucks. But then I have both cards back in my hand. Oh, this is kind of risky, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm going to lose this one. Dang it. Okay, so I'm going to take a damage to get this one back like that. Um, oh, the wrong way, two. But while I was saying that, I actually just remembered that when I did my attack against the archer, I should have done two more attacks. So let me hurry and give him two more damage. So this guy is really down to six over here. But while we're here and this is almost on the screen, we need to just shuffle decks. Let's go ahead and shuffle this guard deck. Holy cow, I'm struggling. Like that. And we'll cut it in half. Put that there. Let's get Crystal's deck shuffled as well. And everybody, let's get the block on the bottom. I'm so sick, or the miss on the bottom. I'm so sick of seeing that. It's making me real sad. Okay, cut it in half so that the block goes at the bottom, or the, <laughs> why do I keep doing that? The mist goes at the bottom, and I should have put this there. Okay, that's going to bring us to round six. We know what Crystal's doing. I just pray, oh, it's not going to be fast enough. Gosh dang it, this, I might have, I might have royally screwed myself over. Because if it comes to my turn to take damage, I've only got two health. Oh, crap. Okay, fingers crossed that the archer is just like, was it the archer or the guard that was just putting up the shield? I think that was the guard. Dang it. I don't know. Uh, I don't think this is going to go well. Okay, so for Norman's turn, here's my internal struggle. I would love to just walk over to the guard and kill the guard immediately. He hasn't been damaged at all. It would be sweet to just kill him. The problem is that he is three spaces away right now. But that doesn't mean he can't move closer. He might move closer to me. Um, so part of me just wants to... So like, do I just stand where I am and attack the archer with this one? Or do I walk over and kill the guard? But I can't walk over to kill the guard. I think the guard is going to be... He's going to have to move closer to me. So I'm going to have to go slowly. Um... Which means maybe I'll play, oh, geez. I'm going to, oh, this isn't very slow. The guards have been going slower. If I play this for two, I mean, I could kill the archer immediately. But it's the guard. The guard has nine hits right now. That's who I really want to kill. And I can't move two. Two's not enough. Oh, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play this one, hoping that that really slows me down enough. Oh, man, but then I'm going to be attacked. No, that's dumb. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I tried to not do all my thinking on camera, but this one I just felt like I should have. So I'm going to attack three there, and then let's put up our shield, because these guys are coming after us, and that's early enough. Okay, so I want to do this instead. Fingers crossed that that's helpful for me. So Norman's initiative is 15. Crystal is 91. Why did I put her at 91? That seems stupid. I know I talked it out. <laughs> I can't remember. Okay, the guard is 55. He is moving and attacking and then strengthening. But I think I'm out of his range. Okay, that could be okay. And Crystal, or not Crystal, the archer is 14. Ooh, that's fast. Um... Okay, he's actually starting us off. Well, they both are. All right, uh, let's start with the elite one. So he's not going to move because he is within range. And he is going to do his attack minus one. So his attack is three, minus one is two. I need a minus. I can't even have a zero. Crystal is dead if I don't get the right uh, attack modifier. Crap. Okay, well... Here we go. Modifier. I need a minus one or a minus two or a miss. Yeah! Yeah! Okay, cool. 
Oh my gosh, she is just barely there. That's freaking nuts. Um, oh, before I get too excited, I need to create a three damage trap in an adjacent empty hex closest to the enemy. So that's gonna go right there. And to remember that it's a three, let's just put a die on there. A three. Okay, that's fine. She can walk around that, no big deal. And then this archer is within range already. So his attack minus one is gonna be a one modified as a plus zero. Ooh. Gosh, I am sweating. I mean, Norman is pretty healed up, so that wasn't terribly scary, but still, anything to prevent major damage is a good thing right now. But that's going to bring us over to Norman's turn. So for Norman's turn, let's go ahead and I do think we're just going to shield ourselves. kind of dumb that I'm not really going to protect myself at all this round, but whatever, there it is. Let me put this here to remind myself that that's what's happening. And then we're going to attack the archer at a range of three. Our attack is three. Come on, excuse me, come on, blessing, blessing, blessing. Or a plus zero. That works too. So that regular guard is down to three. Okay. Um, yes. Next up is the guard. He's right here. He's going to move minus one, so he's going to move once. But that's not going to put him within range of Norman, so he's just going to put himself into place right there. Which is great. Bring him on closer so that I can just walk over and just kill him immediately. So for Crystal, we've got to recover all of our lost cards. So these all come back. This just goes right here. I usually keep it sideways to remember that I don't pick it up anymore. So these are back, and then we're going to summon our Mystic Ally. Let me grab those tokens really fast. Number one, and... That will be a good defense thing. So let's add that to the board. Hopefully that will get the archer going away. Uh, guess? Probably don't put him on the trap. Let's put her right there. And then we're going to slide stuff over like that. And we've got our hand of cards. We're still going strongly. I do need to rest soonish to get my health up, but also uh, so I can get my goggles back. I love those goggles. And just as a reminder, this thing is going to basically have an initiative one less than what Crystal has. And so her initiative, like she would have gone before Crystal. So just coming to the board was essentially her turn. And before I change the round over, I forgot that the guy needs to strengthen himself. So we've got it there. I caught it before it was too, too early. Too late? Too early. And let me just point out, I still have not seen any of those blessing cards. I swear they are in there. But I don't want to look right now. But I swear they're in there. And this shield did nothing. That's okay. Um, it's just like two games in a row that he's had all these blessings and none of them come out. I, it's frustrating. But also fun. I just have pretty bad luck. Okay, round seven. Back to Norman. Uh, two more cards left. And I know he's being attacked. But I think oh, we should be okay. Because here's my plan. I'm going to go initiative 40, and I'm just going to move two. The guard is within range now. If I just move two, I can just walk up and kill him. That's still going to leave the archer there, but if I get really close to the archer, then that's fine. Okay, yes. So Crystal, I think, is going to heal herself and then um, attack. We're going to do that pretty early on. That's also going to give her mystic ally an ability to hopefully, or the chance or opportunity is the word I'm looking for, uh, to do some damage, which almost never happens. So Norman's initiative is 40. Let's hope that beats the guard, because I just want to kill him before he does anything. Oh, don't like that one bit. So 30, okay, well, you know. Then the archer, 32. Jeez. All right, um, okay, Crystal's going first. Well, kind of. The Mystic Ally is going first. So, the Ally has, oh, let me grab a die. A health of two. So we'll put that there to track it. Okay. Health of two. And then, yes, it does suck that I didn't have this card. Well, yes, I'm, I'm pointing out that I'm losing that heal. Okay. Health of two. Attack of three. Movement of two. Range of two. But also, one, two. I should have gotten some experience points for putting her out. Okay, so we are going to be doing an attack of three against the archer. We don't even need to move. Here we go. Yeah, that's a really good one. That's a really good one. I like that. Happy, happy, joy, joy. 
That's going to bring this guy down to two. I think she's going to be able to finish him off. Two. And, oh, what was this guy? Was he at a three? Did I just knock that? I think he was at a three. And then Crystal has got to heal herself. She's up to five. She's struggling here. All right, up to five. And then an attack of three at a range of two. Here we go. Please be good. Just a zero. A zero would be fine. A zero. I thought it was going to be another miss. Okay, so this guy is coming off the board. And we need to add, well, what are we doing? He's off. He's off. There we go. We need to add these. Um, this one's coming to the board right here. I don't know why I put that on that side instead of that side. Here. Here we go. There. There's five. We'll put the other five over here. But I do need to track that she's killed a guy, so I'm going to take that cube off there. In retrospect, I probably should have been doing this oppositely. I should be adding cubes to this thing when I kill him. So how about that? We've killed one person. I'm going to take that cube off. Yes. Sorry. Confusion. That is going to bring us to the guard's turn. Um, so the guard is going to move plus one. So he's going to go three. He's just going to walk right up to Norman. He does have an advantage on this attack. I'm going to remove that now before I forget. Um, but yes, he does have an advantage. So he's attacking three minus one is two. Advantage means we're going to draw two of these. Oh, jeez. Please, please, please. All right. Plus one. That's not terrible. So three on Norman. And I may have forgotten this on the last one. I can't remember. But because I can't remember, I'll just ignore it. So I just got an experience point, blocked one of those three. Oh, and then I'm taking two damage. Okay, cool. All right, that was the guard's turn. And now the archer is uh, range minus one. One, two, three. So he's actually going to move. Wait, one, two, three. Minus one, yeah. So he's got to move over here. Um, and then he's going to attack Norman with a plus one attack. So he's attacking with three right now. Modified. As a miss. Oh, we finally got a miss in the right place. Okay, cool. Uh, that was good. Good news. Then I think we just stick with our normal plan. We're going to have Norman go ahead and kill the adjacent enemy. That's just going to be the guard. We're going to get two points for that. Lots of experience this game. That's good. And then um, we're just going to move to uh, just, yeah. So that guard is dead. Take this off and put this oh, on that side and this in its place. That's fine. But now I need to go to, I want to kind of intimidate this archer. So let's go one, two right there. Sure. I mean, I am going to do a long rest next turn, I think. I don't want to do a short rest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's stand there. I mean, my other option is to kind of run away. Hmm, but I don't think I can get far enough for him. Well, maybe. The only way that that would matter is if he can't move next turn, and I don't really want to bank on that happening. So, yeah, I'll just stay there and force him to have to move back or something. But that was the end of the round, and I think, looking around, this is the only deck that needs to get shuffled. So... We'll get that shuffled up right now. Okay, everybody, let's all think happy thoughts. I know you're watching this probably two to three days or more after I am recording this, but your good thoughts will still put that block or the miss, still doing that, on top. Okay, there's the miss right there. I can feel it. That's going to bring us to round eight. Norman is just going to do a long rest and cross our fingers that we don't take so much damage that I kill myself. Um, so fingers crossed. And Crystal is in a pretty good position where I could use this card to loot for I think the first time <laughs> ever. Uh, don't make me sing the Frozen song. And we'll just move. Um, sure, I'm planning really just on moving two, but no big deal. We're not really in a rush right now. That's the plan. I'm going to go pick up uh, two health, or what? Two loots. Two coins. And I'm not flipping this over. The only reason that I'm not even, like, um, doing anything with this, like not cleaning it off, is because we still have four rooms to open. I'm going to guess that there's probably a guard over there, so I'm just going to leave that there for now. And flip this up. Okay, the archer's 68. 
which is gonna go first. Okay, so the archer, 68, going first. He's attacking plus one. Oh, he's not even moving. Ooh, my plan worked. I mean, kind of. So he is attacking from here. So he's attacking with two plus one is three, but he is at a disadvantage because he can't move out of the way. All right, disadvantage. Oh, you guys didn't pray hard enough, but we did get a minus one. I just wanted the miss there. All right, two on Norman, but he's blocking one of those, so just one. Good deal. That worked out. Things sound really quiet outside of the cave, so Crystal, well, we got to have her ally go first. So the ally is going to move two, and she's going to move two towards the uh, nearest enemy. So she's going to go one, two, right there. Uh, can't pick up any coins or anything, so that's fine. And then while we're here, Crystal is going to also move to right here. Using the loot card, she's going to get these two loots here. We'll just keep those over there for now. And we'll go ahead and just regular discard these ones here. Um, and then she's going to take a long rest, it looks like, before she heads back out to help out Norman, who at this very moment is long resting, so we get these back. We're gonna get two health back, put them up at six, that's great. And then uh, we need to pick one of these to lose. I don't wanna lose that one, I love it. Uh, I could maybe lose this one. I like that one, I like that one. Okay, I love these ones. Between these two, let's get rid of this one and keep this one. All right, Norman is down to four cards. He's getting really close to being exhausted, so Crystal might have to clean this up. We still need to kill the archer and three other people. I really don't know if I don't know if Norman's going to be around that long. He's feeling old. Okay, before changing the round marker, let's go ahead and shuffle these up. Nobody's got any conditions right now. Sweet. There we go. Round nine. Crystal is going to have to rest, and I think the sad news is that the mystic ally is going to walk right into one of the traps and kind of die. Ooh, that's too bad. But doesn't have jump, and I don't know how to make it jump. Okay, Norman is going to just have to be really careful with how we spend our time here on these cards. And so I think we're going to just pierce. That should hopefully kill the archer. And um, let's use... I kind of want to hold on to this attack for when I open the door, but I want a fast initiative. Well, let's just stick with these ones. All right, so initiative of 35. Let's just pierce and hopefully kill the archer in time. And uh, move three. Yeah, I just hope we're fast enough. Um, yeah, we're going to move and open up the door. So the archer, please be slow, please be slow. 32. Oh, man, just a little bit faster than Norman. That is going to kind of mess up our plans a little bit. So he's going to move uh, probably right here to get one away from Norman. He is attacking with two uh, plus one, so three modified. It's right off camera. Modified. All right, three on Norman, who blocks one of them, gets the experience for it. Yeah, Crystal is just not getting... Not getting her very much experience, and I don't know if that's just a trait of her characteristic, like her character, or if I am just suck at playing her or what. But that was the archer's turn, and now Norman is just going to, he can still pierce where that character is, where the, the archer is. So we're just going to attack with three, modified, with a plus one, kills that archer. So he's gone, and that's gone. Here we go here. That goes, oh, backwards. That goes there. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Uh, okay, that's there. <laughs> there, almost, almost there. Okay, and then Norman's going to come over here, open up the door for one of his three movements. We need to go in the app and see what's in that room. And it looks like in that room we've got, um, oh, two, are those, I cannot tell. I think those are guards. All right, two guards. That's two of the three guys that we need to kill. Oh, I don't like the guards, though. Okay, but that's fine. Here they are. And before we decide what Norman's going to do, let's check these guys. Um, all right, their initiative is 70, so they are going to go next. They're going to move minus one and then attack. 
I can push two, their move minus one. Okay, so why don't I have Norman go one, two, right here? He's kind of cornering himself a little bit, but he's almost exhausted anyway. And then he's gonna push one, two, and that's gonna make him unattackable because they can each only move one this turn. So that's gonna be the end of Norman's turn. Let's just clean up this stuff really fast. And coming back here, we probably should <laughs> mark these guys. Uh, so this is one and six, and they both have a health of nine. Ooh, I don't like that. All right, so nine, nine, and then I'll put these loot thingies and these cubes. Crystal has got to come get in on the action. She's got three people to kill if Norman can't really. But that's going to bring these guards are going next. So they can just move one and move one. So they're just going to close in on Norman there. And that's going to bring us to Crystal's rest action. So I probably need to hold on to this movement because she's got to run and get into position. So let's keep that. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to use this one. There's not a very big group, but it could be good to hit those two guys. Hmm, but I don't think, well, it's going to cause me to lose it. Let's, let's do, let's do lose this one. All right, so that one is lost. And she's going to heal up two, which puts her at full health. Thank goodness. Like that, and she gets her goggles back. Yay. Oh, but before she does all that, of course, the Mystic Ally is going to go, as I mentioned, she's going to walk onto the trap, which at least will open up that space. Um, we're going to lose that card there. Yeah, that's going to open up that space. So that if Crystal, so one, two, that's going to explode that trap. So that if Crystal wants to use her eight, one, two, three, she can come in and fight these guys. And with that, we are up to round 10. Man, I've hardly used these, oh, at all. This game, just right there at the very beginning. Could be my own fault. Probably my own fault. So Norman is... What's he going to do? We're just going to... Attack, here we go, 27. We're going to attack three, range of three, and then probably just move two. But we can move more if we need to. We could get out of the way. I don't know if we want to, but maybe. Ooh, maybe we want to lure these guys towards Crystal so that she has a better chance of fighting them before she runs out of cards. Yeah, that's a good idea. And Crystal is... I should have looked at these before. Um, doesn't need to heal. Probably does need to run. That's going to lose that card, but that's okay. Oh, there's some good looting opportunities, but she's really got to run into the action as quickly as possible. Um, can I coordinate this to lure those guys out quickly enough to do this? Uh, maybe. Let's, let's go look really fast. Moving eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm assuming these guys are probably going to go first. One, two, three, four. Yeah, maybe that is what I'm going to do. Oh, but then I'm going to lose two cards. I can't afford... I can't afford to lose those cards right now because I've still got to kill three people to win this scenario. That's too many cards to lose. So what are my alternatives? Uh, my alternative is to just do a move four. We could do that. A move four... And one, two, three, four. That's going to get me right at the doorway. Um, healing Norman won't do anything. Ugh. Crap. I am just going to have to play these cards down and decide what to do. i got to see what the guards are doing. How about that? So my current plan is probably... I don't know. Let's, let's keep it like that for now. <sighs> We're kind of close. Too close for comfort. I can't lose cards. Not if I'm going to win. Okay. I don't know. It's going to kind of come down to what the guards do. So the guards initiative is... Oh, I put Crystal's initiative at 83. Uh, yeah, I, I do want her to go slower. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Guards are... Whoa, 15. Okay. Dang it. They're not even moving. They're just shielding and attacking, which is good because they can't reach me. But I don't like that they have that extra shield. Dang it. Okay. 
Well, yeah. So they're going first. They just put up a shield. And they can't attack because they're not next to me. And they can't hit me with poison either. So my question is, what can Norman do? I guess we do. We just stick with this attack of three, at a range of three, gain an experience point. Gosh, this is going to be close, but I am feeling like I'm going to lose this scenario. And losing two scenarios in a row of Gloomhaven is not, not great. Especially not when you're recording and putting it out there. It's probably not that exciting to watch. That's okay. Here we go. Attack of three at a range of three. I'm just going to go after guard number one, the one closer to the door. And while we're at it, that's going to be... Ooh, we finally got our blessing! Holla! It's not going to be enough to kill him. That's just six, but hey, we can take it. I've got it. That's fine. We've got it. So that's going to bring this guy down to a three. Right? There it is. Three. Okay. Oh, that should be nine. I just bumped it. Oh, except he's blocking one of those. So four. Dang. Okay. <sighs> yes. So now... I can move, uh, how much damage did I just do? I just did six damage. So my question is, do I want to run out? If I run out, well, I need to rest anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, three, uh, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's come back over this way. And yes, maybe what I need to do is lure these guys this way, go open that door, lure whatever's there that way. But also, I need to rest. Okay, cool. So I just used this. Um, do I need to use my boots to get closer to the door? Maybe. Well, yeah, let's use the boots to get closer to the door because I'm going to be resting anyway. Why is that over there? Okay, so I'm, I'm doing that. One, two. Buckle my shoe. And let's not lose cards. This is too close to just be losing cards for not not being sure I can kill people. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, like I said, I know I can hit those guys, but I can't kill them, so it's not worth it to me to lose these cards just yet. So let's just move four. Yeah, we're just gonna move four now. Otherwise, she would literally only have one more turn and then she would be completely exhausted. I've gotta get maybe one or two more out. And again, hopefully Norman's gonna lure these guys this way and then Crystal can do something. <laughs> Epic, maybe, probably not. All right, so one, two, three, four is gonna put her right here at the door. So many rhymes. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and shuffle this up. This is the only deck that I see that needs shuffling. Okay, that goes there. Round 11, Norman is taking a long rest. Crystal is doing something I hope is awesome. I need to remember I have this. I might have forgotten to use that one time. I just always do. Okay, so we've got these. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to use that. Um, let me think for a second. So I'm not healing. Probably just attacking two at a range of three. But I probably want to go slowly enough that the guards walk out and I can hit one of them. And then I'll be attacking with my plus two, probably. Um and maybe a movement of two. I mean, I could hit them with a muddle, which could be good, but then I'm gonna lose that card. Mm-hmm, yep, I gotta, I gotta not do that, because whatever happens, I'm gonna, these are gonna come down here. We are down to the end. Really. All right, so the guards, here we go. Initiative 55, crap, they have a move minus one. I need them to go faster. Okay, this guy's gonna go there. This guy's going to go there, and then they're both getting strengthened. <sighs> okay. So, Crystal, can she get within range? I'm not sure. I need to get within a range of three. So, one, two, three. One, two. Oh, no. Hmm. Let me think. One, two, one, two. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one, two, one, two, three. All right, so Crystal, for her turn, she's moving there and then attacking this guy with an attack of uh, four. Because I'm using that, ooh, which gets me an experience point. Oh, no, wrong way. I can't even see. Five? Yes. Okay, I got to a five. All right. There's that. Ugh, no elements to use. Okay. Here we go. 
Um, an attack of four that will kill that guy. Yes, I got him. Okay, good. Whew. This is seriously too close for comfort. This guy's dead. He's going to put a loot down here. That comes off. And we've got eight dead. We need ten. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I can. Let me just go ahead and add this on here. So let's think Norman, essentially four cards. So I'm going to, let's just math think. I'm going to lose a card now, get these back, play two cards. They're going to get discarded. I'm going to lose one. Norman has two more turns. So how do I maxify that? <laughs> um, I need this attack six to be like the last thing I do. So probably using this move and this push, I'm going to keep this card. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to save that for probably his last turn. Oh, or I move six, use my boots, and this one. Okay, so which one do I lose? I think I lose this. Yeah. Do I lose that? I can't lose this one. Um, hold on. I need to puzzle this out. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> it's been 15 minutes. I think if I do this right, I have no idea what's in that room, but if I do this right, I think I can make this work. I'm gonna quickly talk out my plan so that if I forget my plan, <laughs> I can rewind the video and remember what I said. All right, I am gonna lose this for my rest. I'm getting my boots back for my rest. Okay, next turn, what I'm going to do is, um, in fact, I'm just going to set it out here. I'm going to move three with the possibility of pushing two, and I'm going to use my boots to do that. And I'm going to attack, that's going to be an attack of five. I have no idea if that's going to be enough to kill whatever's in that room, but I sure hope it is. And then what's going to happen after that is both of these are discarded. I'm going to choose to lose this card, and then when this is in my hand, after that, I'm going to probably run the other room to the nine and attack using my boots again. Oh my gosh, I think, I think this is going to work. This might work. It, of course, it depends on what's in that room. I have no idea. Here we go. I'm on my knees right now. Can you even tell from the angle of my hand? Yeah. Okay, so it is round 12. I know I just planned Norman's turn anyway. So for Norman, he... Oh, and I should have healed two, I think. Did I heal two? I don't think I've healed two. Either way, all that thinking. All right, so here's this. Um, I'm probably going to... Okay, I'm going to go 61. My plan is to move five and attack five. And Crystal, oh, I forgot to discard this last time, sorry. That was just a regular discard, is long resting this turn. The guard, Norman is 61. The guard, I need him to come out. 70, okay. Another move minus one. Why are they so freaking slow? Norman's first. I'm moving five and discarding, and then I'm going to attack five. Oh my gosh, my heart. Okay, one, two, we are opening the door. Here we go. Opening the door. What is in here? Uh, what is that? That's the stupid shaman. Okay, but it's not an elite one, it's a regular one. All right, let me get that set up. Here we are, set up. Shaman, this guy thankfully is not elite, so he's at a health of seven. I gotta find out what he's doing and that might help decide what I'm doing with my last, uh, I think I have three, no, I went one, two, three, four, okay, I have five movement. 89, what is he doing? He is moving, healing. Oh gosh, I've gotta kill him. Okay. <sighs> Okay, so I went one, two, three, four, five, right here. 
I'm attacking him with a five. I cannot remember. I cannot remember if I have plus two in my deck right now. So I'm attacking him with five. Oh, did I give myself experience for that? I don't think I did. And at least, mm, did I? <laughs> I can't remember. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, do I still have the plus two? I can't remember. Plus one. Okay. Okay. I'm attacking him with five. I just need a plus two. Plus two. I do still have two blessings in here. Or like two times twos. One is a blessing, one's a regular one. I don't think that I'm going to get that though. Plus two. Here we go. I'm like shaking. Part of it is because I'm hungry because I haven't eaten in a while. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, hold on. That was five. That's ten. That's ten. Holy cow. He got him. My plan, there's no way. Holy cow. It might work. <sighs> oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. That's freaking awesome. Okay, so this guy, he's out. We've got nine of our ten. He's gone. Drop a loot. I don't care about the loot. I can't get the loot anyway for my objective, for my two check marks thingies. Oh my gosh. My heart is racing up a wazoo. But I need to take care of the guard's movement. So the guard is moving one. Either way, sure, why not? And not adjacent to anything. So there's that, and then he's gonna lose his strengthen. Okay. All right. I haven't even I haven't even thought about what the heck Crystal is losing. Um, I'm gonna lose this. There's no point in having that. I'm gonna lose that. Yeah. Okay. I just need her to bring down that other guy a little bit because with Norman's plan that I talked about, he's going to be moving eight and doing a damage of eight. Sure as heck hope I don't miss. But we're shuffling. Okay. So that's what she's doing. She's healing only up to one because her max health is seven. I'm moving this stuff off. I'm not even going to look in the other rooms. So I can't even if I wanted to. We are down to this one guy. But I do have to shuffle this stuff here. Okay. Here I go. Here I go. <laughs> I'm like so nervous. <laughs> this is so stupid. It's just a game. People, it is just a game. So here's an idea of how intense it's gotten. Usually I record in one hour segments. Um, and then I hurry and transfer the video just because like I don't have enough space on my phone that I used to record and all that stuff. But it has been so intense. I have been recording for two hours right now without stopping. Um, just because I'm like so into it and so nervous. All right, that's the only deck that I saw that needs to be shuffled. We are on round 13. Norman is resting. He has to because he only has one card here, but also we need to get our boots back. So he's long resting. <sighs> okay, um, Crystal, she has got to bring that guard out. He ha like he has to get for Norman. He has to keep coming out. So she, the best attack she can do is this, right? That's a two. Yeah, that's her best attack. It's now or never. As far as I can tell. But we do need to get Norman exhausted. Is he going to exhaust this? I don't think he's going to exhaust. <sighs> Hold on. Sorry, guys. I got to think some more. Okay, I'm back. Uh, all right. This is kind of goofy. Um, I need him to stay alive. Like... If I'm going to get Norman to exhaust, which I want to for his big scenario thing, and I know that's not the most important thing right now, I just need Crystal to kind of move, like to keep moving to pull that guy closer to Norman and might as well pick up some gold while we're at it. So here's my plan. I'm just going to move to like normal and to loot. And here's why I'm thinking this. I'm going to have Crystal come one, two down here. 
And I have no idea what the guard, his normal movement is two. I don't even know if he's moving. But if he does move two, one, two, he's going to come over here and attack Crystal. But she's going to loot these two coins. Fine. So that's going to put the guard right here, I'm guessing. And that means I need Norman. He's planning on moving eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. And the guard's going to be right there, I think. Yeah, so that's going to get me these two coins, which is great. Um, I'm not going to be attacking this guy. He has a health of nine. I might, I might kill him. I might not. But ideally, Norman won't kill this guy completely. And then Crystal can get the final blow so that Norman technically gets exhausted. That's the plan that I'm going for. <laughs> But for that to happen, I need him to go into the right place. For him to go to the right place, I need to go first. I'm going for seven. I have no idea why I put that green cube over there first. And the guard, he is going 30. All right, here we go. We're playing this out. I'm going first. I am moving to and looting these coins with Crystal. Sorry, I realized I just kept saying I'm. Who's I'm? I am both of them. That's like really deep. You could write a book about that. Okay, so those go there. I realize Crystal is putting herself into a bad situation, but she has the health to take it on. The guard. Oh, I didn't even look at the guard. The guard is going movement plus one, which is great. He's going three. One, two. He's going right there, and he's attacking minus one. So his attack is three minus one. Plus one, so three to Crystal. That's fine, three. One, two, three. Okay, Norman Dresting. We are losing this one. Getting this one back. Healing, two. No, other way. Healing, two. Getting the boots back. Round 14, nothing to shuffle that I can remember. Norman is playing these two cards and weirdly enough I'm secretly hoping that he does not kill the guy because if he does kill the guy the Norman can't exhaust I need Nor I would love Norman to exhaust to get uh, a, a another thing for his his zealot thingy hoo-ha and sorry, I realize I haven't talked... I'm just assuming anybody watching this video has watched the previous ones. Norman's overall objective is to exhaust himself as much as possible. He's too strong on his health right now to really exhaust himself, but... Okay, here we go. Crystal is resting. She doesn't have a card. Um, ooh, should I rest now? Or should I have short rested before? Probably should have short rested before. Hold on, let's think. Norman's gonna go attack this round. No, I need Crystal to take one more turn. Yeah, I need her to take one more turn. Okay, we're good. She's long resting now. Okay, so the guard is going 35. Okay, they're going first. And, oh, okay. I didn't really think this one about, or I didn't think <laughs> this one about, I didn't think about this. He's doing a range, so he's moving back but I still think we're okay. So he moves back one, attacks Crystal with three, modified, minus one, okay, good, two. That's fine, she's not scared of that. Here we go, two. Oh, we are cutting this so close. We are cutting it so close. And now it's Norman's turn. Um, all right, I'm losing this, gaining an experience. And then we're going to attack there. And then when he goes to rest on his next turn, assuming I can make it to the next turn, he gets exhausted, which is great, because we also have managed to do this one. That's three check mark. Well, it's not a check mark for him. It's I just keep saying that weird. It's two check marks because of this. And then I'm going to get um, a point towards that thing. I'm losing my mind. Why is this stacked? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right here. We're attacking eight. He has a health of nine. So if I get a minus or a plus, no, sorry, a minus or a zero 
That's good news, because the Norman will exhaust next turn. But if I get a plus, that's still fine. I win the scenario, which I never thought I was going to do. I just won't exhaust. But again, that would be totally fine with me. So remember at the beginning of the scenario when I kept drawing crappy cards for myself. I need to draw a crappy card for myself. 8 damage. Modified. As a plus 0 is great. Oh yeah, and I used my boots to do that. And just to be safe, I probably, yeah, I would have used yeah, that. That's fine. Okay, cool. That way Crystal can definitely take him out on her next turn. So eight damage, he's down to one, and we add a poison. I cannot believe it. I did not think, like the only way that this could have happened, or like, was for me to get that one times two, or maybe that plus two, whatever it was. I Killing that guy changed everything. But I'm gonna give myself a tiny bit of credit, because I really spent a butt ton of time thinking of Possible scenarios. Oh, I just got lucky. I got lucky this time, which does not happen very often Crystal is resting. She gets two and We're losing this doesn't matter if I have that or not that comes back <sighs> Yes, 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 yes Round where am I 13 14 round 15 Norman's gonna rest. He's going to exhaust so good Crystal needs to do one final blow to that guy. Uh, let's go early, because, yeah, let's just kill him. I don't want him striking anybody. And the guard goes 15. Oh, he does have a shield, though. That does put a small twist to this in that I really hope Crystal can kill him. Okay, I still think she can, but he is, he is shielded up right now. The only way for this to not work, because Crystal has this right here, so I'm going to use that. She's attacking, I really could have gone either way. It, well, yeah, I probably should swap this. Let's swap that. And here, I'll heal three, put me back at seven, that's super fun. And we are going to go ahead and do this one. The reason why I'm swapping is because I want to get that experience point there. So, experience there, heal, I'm using this, <laughs> we're going to bump up the leaf. So I'm attacking that guy with an attack of 3, plus 2 is 5, plus he's poisoned is 6, modified, with a plus 1 is 7. He's blocking one of those damages, but um, that's going to do it. He is dead, we make a mess of things, oh my gosh. <laughs> Drop that loot right there. He can't take his turn. And finally, after zinging back and forth, like he ran laps or whatever. Like, what is that? What's that called on the football field where you like run the 10 and then you run the 20 and then you run the th whatever it's called? That's what Norman feels like he just did. He just falls over totally exhausted from that nightmare. And that was the end of the scenario. We did it. I don't know how we did it. I'm glad we did it. I was feeling very defeated after the last game. It was hard for me to be like, yay, let's go play Gloomhaven. But man, that was fun. It has rejuvenated me. I have spring break this coming week. Hopefully I can maybe, I know I have a, well, here's the thing, guys. Uh, I've got a few games, I've got a few games I want to play. Plus, in theory, Seventh Continent is showing up this week. Fingers crossed. That would be amazing if they would show up. So that's how I'm spending my spring break, probably. But if you want to see the decisions I make, whoa, duh, what am I talking about? We have to go to the app. I got so excited. Let's go to the app, see what happens. Okay, this is a very long conclusion. It covers two pages. Let's read what happened. I'm going to try to read this carefully. Running through the forest, fleeing the smell of burning flesh, you now find more than enough opportunity to contemplate your actions. How your actions sit with you must be visible on your face as you meet once more with Jekshara. This time, in her manner, she hands you a sack of coins with a frown. They were thieves and murderers, she says blankly. They deserved what you gave them. And that is all I will say of the matter. I have one more task I would like you to perform. 
I require a diamond of considerable size for a customer, but I cannot find one anywhere in the city. There is a diamond mine, however, in the southern mountains, long since lost to the wilderness. I've heard reports that it is now overrun with vermlings, no doubt with some other more intelligent force behind them. If you can fight your way in and grab the biggest diamond you can find, I will give you a considerable reward. That would be scenario nine. Now leave me in peace. Jexera's two massive Inex bodyguards step forward, directing you to leave the matter. Outside, contemplating your new task, you hear a small voice behind you. She's not looking for profit, you know. We go to the next page. You turn around and see a female quadrille step out of the alley besides Jexura's house. She's clad in dark leather armor and holds a, cons con a conspicuous contraption full of whirring gears. <laughs> wow. And, and topped with a conical metal piece connected to a tube. I am so smart at reading. Argis, city guard, she says, introducing herself. I know I don't exactly look the part, but if anyone isn't what they appear to be, it's the Vel Valreth you've been talking to. Sure, she's a merchant. She's been... <clears throat> but she's up to something far more sinister. She's been trying to overthrow the military in Gloomhaven for as long as I've been there, and we're very curious about what her current machinations are. Look, you can go do her bidding like a good puppy if you want, but if you'd rather actually help this town keep the peace and not get overrun by the wilds, I have a different idea. We'll get to the bottom of Jexra's plan and expose her for who she really is. So it looks like we've got two new locations and scenarios opened, the Diamond Mind or the Gloomhaven Warehouse. The party achievement Jexra's plan, 15 gold each and one prosperity. Okay, guys, there you have it. I can't believe my phone is still hanging in there. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> so if you want to see what I decide to do, um, go ahead and watch the cleanup video. I'll clean up this whole mess, and we will uh, discuss Norman and Crystal's future plans. It's kind of disturbing what we just learned. We know that there are children in that cave, but we just left them behind. We've just killed all of their parents. It's tough to know if we've done the right thing or not. I don't know. I'm very conflicted. But either way, thank you guys for joining me on this gameplay video. It was a freaking joy and a doozy and stressful. I need to go take a shower. Thanks for watching. Bye!